everyone, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Bacon, bacon, pancakes, bacon, bacon, pancakes, bacon, pancakes. <laughs> Apparently he has been hired by Dennis to make promotions. <laughs> also, Brony reviewer Silverquill. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, now where's my castle? <laughs> And his army of fanboys, apparently. And hilarious brawny reactor, <laughs> Geek Askin. Wow, thanks, James. Uh, it's good to be here on the reviewing episode. This is going to be fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Now we have extra energy and power because you are a reactor, so that's brilliant. Whoa, I'm going to your... <laughs> call you a reactor from now on, you and your reaction videos. Oh, oh, and today we are going to be reviewing episode 3 of season 5 of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, uh, titled Castle Sweet Castle, written by Joanna Lewis and Christine Sonko. Uh, and this is one very interesting episode to talk about. I really don't know how to tackle this one. So uh, we're going to start with first impressions and then we're going to r- jump right into uh, uh, talking about it as the episode goes on. But yeah, let's go for it. So guys, what did you think of this episode? Well, going into this, one of the things that can work against the audience is we've had 11 months to look at this castle's introduction and its design and the rather unique mar- merchandise that's come out uh, in addition to it. And i got to be honest, I do not like Twilight's castle at its base design. It sends all the wrong messages and conveys just the wrong feeling for the princess of friendship. That's over here. That's one part of it. But then over here is the episode, which is trying to add a little personality, a little individuality to the castle to build it up. And I'm all for that. And I thoroughly enjoyed seeing the the Twilight's friends trying to not really, the goal was not let's fix up this castle. It's let's prove how well we know our friend. And they put so much pressure on themselves because of that. And I also just found the the main song really catchy. So all in all, well, I don't think I'll ever champion the castle itself, at least its design. I did thoroughly enjoy the episode and have fun and also appreciated what they did add to the castle to make it look better on the inside. It is difficult to vouch for a marketing ploy or a, or a toy advertisement when it's as transparent as that one now, isn't it? As for me, when I take a look-see for the episode, for what it is as an episode, it's not bad. It's not how well you know your friend, but it's how do you want to treat your friends? How nicely do you want to do things? And obviously, their first mistake is they think about themselves first, blah, blah, blah. We'll go into it when we'll go into it. But here and there, the episode's kind of fine, and I don't see any problems like what people are talking about with how they ended with the Golden Oaks and whatnot. And yeah, let's just say that I do not agree with most of them. And to Silver's regard about the tree or the castle itself, it looks like a tree and it doesn't look that nice in Ponyville. And the whole aesthetic of it is crystal base. And if you take a look-see, really, it's so small. Small, I thought. I, I've always wanted it's cavernous. It, it it's like a TARDIS. I mean, it's very tiny on the outside, but it is huge on the inside. It's like it's like the Super Mario sixty four castle. <laughs> Have you ever tried to figure out how they put that many <laughs> rooms inside uh, that one castle? Yeah, probably. But no, but I'm like I'm saying, when you take a look, see like the shot here, like I have I have, I have the castle open. It looks so small compared to um, what uh, Celestia have and what Cadence have because Celestia has a garden and whatnot. And well, Cadence has a new empire. For, yeah. yeah, but I mean, Twilight is a newbie, a newbie princess. She has to start small. Yeah, but and then this again, one did grow out of the ground. Uh, yeah. Technically, the tree is the garden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, new boom. age, new age architecture. Put the garden inside the house and make the garden the house. That way, <laughs> you don't have to take the garden outside of the house. Oh boy. But, in regards to the episode, I think I'm going to be the devil, devil's advocate here to most people's reaction is from the get go, from, from introducing the animals to, to Twilight and I wanted to go home to the moment they're having the pancakes. It was predictable to me. The whole storyline was predictable and that really threw me out of it. I, I went back. That was my first reaction to it. But after having gone back and watched it a few more times, there were bit, there were bits of it that, really 
made it enjoyable, but the storyline still sort of wavered, like like I said, predictable, and that kind of th- throws me out of it a bit for a second release of an episode. I mean, episode three. I shouldn't be guessing um, the, the storyline straight away. Well, consider that this is a new uh, new writers uh, working on the show. Whenever you have a new writer coming in the show, it is it's 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 rough coming uh, starting working in a in a whole new show that you doesn't matter how well you study it you're gonna have to uh, go through the motions like but you know what being predictable that doesn't that doesn't mean necessarily bad it just oh, no, no, no. it wasn't a bad episode yeah it yeah, was yeah. Just the story I have quite a few I don't get me wrong I like the episode it was just like I said like I said predictable I can't I can't say it any more times without repeating myself and I enjoyed it with a butt. That's a, that's the best way I can put it. Ooh, <laughs> a butt. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. my. <laughs> so what is uh? Oh, we can go we can go on the on that if, later if you want. Mm, yeah. What about yeah. you, James? So well, um, I I really miss the slice of life episodes that uh, this show does so well. Uh, the the last slice of life episode that we had was. <laughs> I will go as far as saying that the last one we got was Inspiration Manifestation. Because even the Equestria, even the Equestria Games episode was a conclusion of a several uh, build-up episodes that we have had throughout seasons three and four. So, uh, it's been the first slice of life episode that we have for a while. They start washing out animals and having a pancake uh, breakfast. It is so normal. It is so, uh, s- such a mundane episode. And I don't say mundane in a bad way. I liked it as an episode that you can switch off your brain and just enjoy. Um, but then after watching it a couple of times, I figured out a few things that made me enjoy the episode a lot more. And I can go through those on the, on the review of the actual episode. But yeah, for, I really liked it. I, I thought it was a very good uh, first start to these uh, two new writers. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about Tradio? Tradio was uh, Size of Life episode two. Yeah, but Tradia came uh, before Inspiration Manifestation. Yeah. Tradia was episode 22, Inspiration uh, Manifestation yeah. was 23, uh, the Equestria Games episode was 24, and then we have the T-Rex episodes, 25 and 26. Then we have the Equalization episodes with 1 and 2. This is the first Slice of Life episode in a while. Mm, okay, okay. Okay, so uh, we're going to go hip deep into spoilers uh from this moment on. So if you haven't had the time to watch the episode, I mean, come on guys, it's it's out there. You can, you can you can find it and I'm pretty sure you will be able to uh you, you look for it and you can find it. But yeah, we're gonna go f- hip deep into spoilers. So watch out. Mm-hmm. It's totally legal means. <laughs> <laughs> it's already on iTunes and Google Play and also Amazon I guess. So we start the episode with Twilight giving a very helping hoof to uh, Fluttershy, cleaning the animals and all that. And when Fluttershy brings up the, hey, shouldn't you go back to your castle and uh, get a shower? Twilight just puts an angel through the mud <laughs> to find an excu- excuse to keep cleaning the animals with Fluttershy. Yes. Oh, uh, so glorious. <laughs> oh, hey there, buddy. Carver time. <laughs> that was fantastic. Although I, uh, I have to... Challenge what you said, James, that this is just a fine, normal episode. What part of brushing a bear's teeth <laughs> is normal? Uh, I, I cannot I imagine park rangers <laughs> just walking up to a bear saying, Hey, can I see those bicuspids? <laughs> Hello, boo-boo. Do you think we can get a brush from the park ranger? I should, I should, I should make a, I should make a pointification and say that normal episode for this show. <laughs> <laughs> Like comparing uh, <laughs> brushing teeth has uh, on a bear have nothing to do with giving him a chiropractic massage <laughs> that looks like you're snapping his neck like M Bison. It's like, oh god, it's like you're going Mortal Kombat. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. I love that. <laughs> she went out Kung Lao on him. <laughs> oh, oh god. She, oh, she did. But no, I like this. I like this moment. It's like. Uh, He's like, oh, finally, you Fluttershy doing something animal related that doesn't end with her uh, looking all pristine and clean. She's getting uh, down and dirty. Yeah. <laughs> as far as that can sound, I like the fact that they show the side effects of uh, having to look after these many animals. Of course, you're going to get messy. But why were they muddy in the first place? The pig, I understand, but the bear, the weasel, the duck, and also the bunnies—like, what? I'm going to go with the head cannon and say mud wrestling. 
Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're gonna have to censor that, Norman. <laughs> Animal <laughs> wrestling would be awesome, I think. That wins. I'm still waiting for that mud wrestling episode between Applejack and Rarity. Never uh, happened. I, I, I'm going to say that the beavers lo- lowered a dam, accidentally flooded an area, and all the all the animals got dirty. Okay, let's go with that. It's and also then, kind then, of... Uh, and then they on, wanted on. to make Fluttershy dirty. Oh, uh, my. Uh, I, 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 I think that from a technical point of view, maybe it's difficult to show... Uh, uh, dirt on the characters unless it's muddy. <laughs> so like, oh yeah, it's mud. They are just, uh, they're just covering on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, but yeah, no, th- can I, can I, can I say I love all the abuse that Angel is getting at the beginning of the episode? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? This is the completely 180 from the last episode, like season four, episode three. Back then, he was the one that's being the bully. And now he's getting <laughs> bullied here. So well, not yeah. really bullied, more like careless. It's like, oh no, Fluttershy and Rarity are trapped in the castle. Maybe you should go hang out with Twilight and eat all her carrots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why oh, did she have oh. carrots? Why did the castle have carrots? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> they have to it be super no ancient sense. carrots. Super ancient carrots from the age of Nightmare Moon. Oh god, no. And, and yet carrots age like fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> and yet he didn't get a tummy ache. Go fig. Yep, indeed. <laughs> well, it's, he it's, 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 it's Angel. It's bit. Angel. He, uh, he scares the tummy ache awake. <laughs> no, but, okay, but before, before we go any further, that, okay, this is something that Equestria Daily brought up and they dedicated an entire post about this. The backgrounds in this episode are amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. there is no better example than the, <laughs> the outside of Fluttershy's cottage. I mean, if you look at it, it looks like the illustration of a children's book. Oh yeah, such Especially a step up. Sundown. Yeah, such a step up from season one. I mean, I can even see individual leaves in the in 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 the rooftop. It is so pretty. Probably they, I don't know, hired more people. Who knows? But let's carry on. We're we're on this section a bit too long. Well, there's Angel does do just a little bit of bullying when he locks Fluttershy out in a tiff. Uh, yeah. after, after he becomes the new Flufflepuff. <laughs> yeah. It shows that Fluttershy is still a bit of a pushover, even after all these lessons she's learned, which I suppose is part of a character, but, you know, come on. I thought we got over this, you know, bunny controls the master situation. <laughs> uh, that may never go away. Well, but that's the thing, is that Angel is the, you know, abusive, quote-unquote, boyfriend. Uh, mm. Though I like, I like the idea of the mascot leaving the... Leaving the owner outside, kind of like you know, uh, like the Flintstones. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, but we can't forget about how Fluttershy is just like shooing Twilight away, <laughs> passive aggressive. Oh yes, passive aggressive to... shy is in full force this episode. <laughs> That's the best kind of Fluttershy. <laughs> I, I guess she is. She doesn't like to say say the <laughs> say right away. Twilight, could you please get the hell out of my house? <laughs> Like, I really need to go to sleep. It's very late. Yes. Yes. Uh, but th- th- this is already an indication of Twilight going through um going through something that she definitely doesn't want to want to go to the castle because every time that Fluttershy brings it up, she's like, "Can I do something else? Is there anything else I can do?" It's like she is avoiding it, and uh, that is um that is made apparent more than not on the on the next uh, scene, which is. I gotta say it, the hungriest this show has ever made me in a while. Like, mm. I, as I am talking about this, I already had lunch. And I am looking at these stills on the wiki. It is making me want to go for some pancakes. Oh, I, I have pancake barter in the, in the fridge. I could make some pancakes right now. These pancakes look delicious. Yeah. They look so good. I don't know what to say. Pancakes, man. Like, oh, this week's episode has pancakes too. Like, pancakes. Pancakes. Everybody loves so, pancakes. So sweet and tasty pancakes. Don't be too hasty. Also, may I say that Rarity is the only one eating pancakes with a fork? <laughs> yeah. Oh, even Fluttershy is eating with her mouth. Like, obviously, but not using her yeah, tools. Without but, a yeah, for, without a horf, without <laughs> a fork. Horf. Yeah. <laughs> what am I saying? Sir, I abhor you. But uh, everybody's talking, like, say how the breakfast is awesome. And I just love the surprise that Pinky Spice is talking about. 
Uh, surprise is that you left the mystery spoon on the barter. <laughs> Somebody's gonna be gonna be a big surprise. <laughs> and the, I, the, the way that Riley is looking and looks the, at the party, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, really is almost, that is one of the bits that made it for me. It's like this episode gotten better just because of the subtle quirk where she goes, <laughs> "Is there really?" Yeah, <laughs> she might do. Such a neat little detail over there, and of course they uh, they cut to Twilight and. I have never seen Twilight so frazzled since uh, Lesson Zero. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say Lesson Zero wins in the frazzled part. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> because as tired as she was, she was not going, Hi, girl! <laughs> <laughs> never again. In here, she's just frazzled. In that one, she was frazzled and insane. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, so true. But, yeah, but, I mean... Here they are explaining how they, um, how they all have been getting help from Twilight uh, the entire week. And mm-hmm. they are like, why would she be doing something like that? And uh, and then she falls over the pancakes mm-hmm. and hugs it like a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so cute. That's just so cute. Uh, I, I and think they season... say the brony fandom squeed that day. <laughs> I think season five's meme is going to be pancakes. So well, they. So many folks have have commented. Oh, there was a there was a fan art of the four princesses eating pancakes. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And Twilight had one. So basically, the Bronies just proved that million monkeys had million typewriters, <laughs> completing the works of Shakespeare. <laughs> true, <laughs> true. Didn't they make that experiment before? And they all wrote was like twenty pages of the letter G, and then defecated all over the typewriters. <laughs> But it's similar to how oh. the Brony fandom makes the fanfics. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Ouch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shots fired, shots fired. Yep, yep. Uh, but now is that, yeah, they, uh, they're trying to figure out why, uh, why is Twilight acting like this and why she seems to be uh, avoiding something. And as Pinky Pie finds the measuring spoon on the barter, Twilight wakes up to the most adorable reaction I have seen in a while. I'm pancake. <laughs> uh, so I'm, 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 I'm awake. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, she's so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> that, is, that still doesn't like as cute as that is. That doesn't. That pales in comparison to uh, how Pinky reacts to the next pancake. Do 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 do. Pinky. It's fantastic. But just just looking at them. Having breakfast makes me want to go get some pancakes right now. Uh, so, uh, so um, as uh, as Twilight wakes up, uh, Rarity is very forward, wondering what's going on. And Twilight just says that she's been avoiding the castle because she doesn't feel like uh, like home. It doesn't feel like she belongs there. And that is a that is a subject that I was hoping they will treat in this uh, in this <coughs> season. Uh, it was actually one of my hopes. I don't know about you guys, but. I was wondering, how is Twilight going to cope with the loss of the library in favor of this castle that feels so, uh, for lack of a better word, impersonal? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, the castle may look pretty, but it doesn't have any personality whatsoever. It's, uh, no. It, it, no, it's like yeah. it just suddenly appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> but, well, you have to think about it like this also, James. In the first episode of season one, Twilight was forcibly forced to go to Ponyville and make friends. And she was forced, well, her home of residence for that time or for for that duration of stay was at the Ponyville library. That's no, about but, it. But no, then, you don't, you don't understand what I'm saying is that when you live in a place for so long, and this has been four seasons <coughs> worth of living in the library, uh, over however time she was living in the library in Canterlot, after living for four seasons in the library, the library is gone. It's not going, it's not ever going to come back. Most, especially after this episode, it, it is gone. That place is oh. gone. How is she going to cope with that loss? Yeah, I mean, I don't pancake know. parties. <laughs> <laughs> pancake parties. But on that subject, like, has any other villain left a, a mark in a question? I mean, T Rex actually destroyed a library that we can still see is gone, but in other villains, just Went. Sandra left damage on the crystal ponies and left them forever uprooted in time. I suppose, yeah, but I mean, yeah, like a, like m- a physical. Uh, I I have the head cannon that uh, Luna's blotch of uh, re- black ink on her flank. That if you remember, her cutie mark was just the crescent moon. Mm. I want to think that the blotch of of black ink on her flank is the the remain of her being Nightmare Moon. 
Not really. Um, when she was there, she was when when her cutie mark got zapped into Twilight. The black splosh was always there. That's what I mean. But no, never never mind. The the uh, we're we're losing the the point of this of the episode. <laughs> we're <laughs> starting to talk about other things. Oh no, Lu- no, no. Luna's pl- Luna's plot eclipses the plot. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Good grief! Uh. <laughs> no, but no, back back to the castle is that. Yeah, like she is trying to cope with the loss of the library over this new castle, and that is something that resonates with me. I have moved uh, three times uh, throughout my entire life, and every time that I move to a new place, it never feels like it belongs to me after a while, because there is something missing. That it's it's not mine yet. It, it, it's not my house up until a couple of uh, weeks, perhaps perhaps months. In the worst case scenario, even years, until it feels like you belong there. And the things that make you uh, belong to the place that you just moved in are the things that you bring, uh, are not the things that you bring from the other place, but the memories that you bring from the other place, the people that you bring from the other place. So uh, that is something, that is a theme that goes on throughout the episode, subvertedly, maybe? Probably. But it is something that I'm very glad that they are doing in this in this show, in not a very heavy-handed way. Like, it is so easy for them to go over-dramatic and start, you know, tugging at your heartstrings, when, in my opinion, I think they did this very natural. If we want to talk overt, however, let's talk Pinkie Pie. <laughs> and... Oh, please. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about Pinkie Pie's description of the castle for a moment. Please tell us, Silver. Please tell us. All right. So, well, first off, she's doing the thing she did in Philly Vanilli. <laughs> she is... She's getting so energetic and talking about all this stuff and basically grinding the problem to its raw nerve. However, two things save her from making that repeat mistake. Oh, yeah. One, she doesn't drive Twilight to tears. Kind of a big deal. Two, she after she's talked about the huge hallways that make you feel small, the cold floors, <laughs> crystal everywhere, I've always thought that... Uh, Crystal is like the worst material to build a home around. <laughs> Cadence. <laughs> Why, and, and, oh, well, you know, she built it on a marsh, and that sunk, so they built another castle, and that sunk. <laughs> we got the most stable <laughs> castle in the kingdom now. But um, I'm trying to remember what number three was. She had, like, a trifecta. But either way, Twilight's castle... Pinky acknowledges, okay, yeah, I can see why that would upset you. For once, she's aware of the situation. And that's why it's not a repeat of the Philly Vanilli uh, blunder. Yeah, because she's aware of her uh, being yeah. too overt. Or, or she, she at least aware of, the, aware of the problem. But I certainly hope so, because that was the biggest detractor for Philly Vanilli. Mm-hmm. But the, we- the weird thing is that this uh, tirade also highlights all of my issues with the castle. Namely, you knew you knew right from the first time they entered. You saw the headroom in that hallway and the length they were walking. It's like, good God, this is just the front door. <laughs> <laughs> this place is huge. You're having you've got a pony and a baby dragon living inside, and that's it. Yeah. In this cavernous, uh, multi-roomed <laughs> palace that has basically three colors: violet, blue, and green in varying <laughs> yeah. shades. Which is not only swallows Twilight because she doesn't get to stand out from the background, it feels cold. These are very cool color schemes. When you look at the main sixes homes later in the episode, you notice that the backgrounds are all earth Warm. tones and warmer colors. Yeah. This this is the color scheme of an evil overlord. <laughs> <laughs> well, foreshadowing. Evil head cannons and Twilight. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> but mm. it's not only that. That you mentioned purple and green. Look at Spike. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. It's, it yeah, follows Spike. him too. Uh-huh. Yeah, Spike will get lost in the background as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I absolutely agree with uh, with that. Despite well, despite all of this, we also have to give prop a propose to the to the guy behind the ba- the background design on this episode. That again, the same way that Flat Rose's cottage looked beautiful. I like the. I yes, the colors came on that castle is. <laughs> but the the design of the columns, I like how it starts kind of like crooked and then it becomes a bit more ornamental. There is like three three motifs on the on the windows. Uh, I like the tapestries. I don't know. It's 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 such a mixed bag. Yeah. 
like maybe if it if it had been given a different color scheme, it could have been a bit more likable for a for a background. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm describing the background like it's a character, but mm-hmm. backgrounds yeah. can be characters. Yeah, I, I also yeah, enjoy how the, the layout. See, I can picture it, like the way, like the front door connecting to the to the the map room and then to the dining room. I can picture that in my head because I feel like it's well laid out. Yeah, it's it is clear that Twilight is unhappy with the with the castle and that her friends know that. So uh, when a rarity recommends Twilight to take uh, a, a, a trip to the spa, as the five of them decide to uh, uh, redecorate the castle and make it feel more like home. And here comes the part of the episode that made me made me gasp. One of them, as a Spike interrupts the meeting, he appears while grabbing a rarity doll. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, someone brought that up. That's a little creepy. I'm sorry, but <laughs> no more than she's in the, the room. <laughs> she's right there. Well, okay. Spike. Uh, uh, in the comics, they established that Sweetie Belle sleeps with a Spike doll. So. What? Really? There's there's, a, there's identity theft all over. Uh, wow! This Friends Forever fourteen. They uh, when Sweetie Belle is waking up from in in bed, she has a little Spike doll. Now, granted, Spike is not in the room, and the comics are second tier canon, so I'm sure people will make that sure. argument. But I but I just think to myself, okay, that's a thing now. Uh, triangle, hey. I had I had a few people coming at me and saying, "James, a Spike stole movie slate's rarity doll." <laughs> in, in my in my uh, ask blog in Ask Movie Slate, uh, uh, my my OC has um, a rarity doll, uh-huh. like, uh, kind of like Smarty Pants. Mm-hmm. Looks very similar to that design, and I love it. I love that consistency that the show has mm-hmm. with the the, the stuff rack dolls with buttons for eyes. Mm-hmm. Now, I know. Minute detail, but it's so cool. I like the fact that they continue that um a Spike has an appreciation for rarity thing <laughs> in such a such a way that not everybody will will catch it, but those who have been following the show from the actual absolute very beginning will be like, hey, 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 nice. True, true. Or they'll true. be oh, 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 oh stalker. <laughs> yeah. The implication I'm on that side. <laughs> Spike, why does that doll have That's not a word on that side? Oi. <laughs> Uh, 2.0, do your job. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not he's not part of this fandom, but um, mm. I love I love like uh, the sort of callbacks to some of the older episodes, like uh, Rainbow Dash's love for cider. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's gonna be cider. I mean, uh, cool. And uh, <laughs> AJ's reaction to that of just I love AJ's just deadpan. Are you real? Look, <laughs> she gives in a lot of episodes. Uh, she did it back in season four with the eyebrow. That made me go, oh my god. And she does it again here, just without the eyebrow. I love it. So Spike Bay will only takes Twilight to the spa, uh, after stuffing his face full of pancakes. Uh, and leaves the, they imagine. leave the, they leave the main six, uh, well, the, the main f- the main five alone to, uh, take care of the castle. And that starts the, the late motif of this episode. This, uh, very catchy, very, uh, Ear warmy song. To start off the song was Rainbow Dash. Which I which, thought, which when I saw that, I was going to be like, oh, really? A Rainbow Dash? And she led it so well. And it went really, really well in my book. The first time I heard it, I actually kind of, I felt like Rainbow started off on a little bit of a sour note. Yeah, she sounds but a bit then, squeaky. But then it, then it kicked into high gear. However, I can ruin this song for you all. Oh, God. Oh, please, do that. Do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, according to UrbanDictionary.com, do you know what the phrase to make can mean? To make what now? To make. To make? Yes, the verbiage. All right. It means to poop. (laughs) So, so, when our heroines are skipping up to Twilight's Castle saying we're going to make and we'll make, and we'll make. I'm thinking there was a lot of fiber in those pancakes. <laughs> well, you know that ponies love oats, and oats are good mm. for their digestion. Uh, but, yeah. You know, it, it, you know what? I think it kind of has. A, it could have a sort of a subvert meaning. Of course, they wouldn't put this in this in the episode. But the of first time, they, but the first time they they are fixing the castle, they do a pretty. That's not a word. Job. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just saying Urban Dictionary and myself ruins everything. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, but th- th- this you is the thing. So is that it, but this song is so 
so cheerful and so happy. Like it is, it is a cheerful, happy, energetic song. And right when it ends, mood whiplash. Oh, <laughs> we did such a good job. It's full of animals and rainbow dash trophies and uh, oh, Apple Jack, are these quills being tashed? No, they're just old. <laughs> that was so good. It feels so good. It's like, what? are these being teach? No, they're old. <laughs> Why did she sniff a rug? It's because, uh, you know, Rarity. <laughs> no! I, 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 I think Rarity would avoid that. It's she a blanket, that really. Hey, I, uh... I've, I've seen Inception. That, that detail can undo you. <laughs> oh yes, it definitely can. By the way, there is no better sensation when going in, into a new house and smell that new rug feel because it, it smells like it. It smells like clean fabric, but that fabric is definitely clean. I mean, look at Rarity's face. Yeah, my God. Oh but I, I, I love that exchange. It's like two completely different point of view. It's like, oh, that is so vintage. Hmm, that's old. It's like we, like in trade, yeah. <laughs> they, ex- they, ex- they said exactly the same thing. I, I just love how everyone's being semi-aggressive here, but not really passive-aggressive no, they, once they, again. They, they, are, they are doing the best not to uh, be rude to each other. Yeah, yeah. They, are, they are trying to be complacent and, uh, and uh, complimentary, trying to find a silver lining to this disaster that they made. And For now. In, comes, in comes Spike to say... Gee, good grief! This this is a ter- this is terrible. This place looks terrible. This is something that I like about this episode. Um, remember, uh, Silver, in your review of Inspiration Manifestation, when you mentioned that in the in the writers panel, they couldn't figure out a way to put Spike in a proper manner in the in the episodes that he's in with the rest of the main six. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, think... I had my own issues with that. He was a major course, supporting well, role in this one. I think in this episode, they, in this episode, they managed to make good use of Spike because he's very honest, he's helpful, and he's still funny without, uh, without being a laughing stock or just there to be the Joker. Uh, he is the target of many jokes. I mean, we're gonna when we get to the spa, we're gonna get the best, absolute best joke <laughs> in the entire episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but he, he does have humor in it, but and he puts himself into a lot of slapsticky situations, but not just for the sake of it. I mean. He, he has a use in the story, and I like that. But I, I, will, I will say, though, along that, that same mentality, there's one joke that I'm just like, oh, come on, guys, really? That portrait, <laughs> the, the, you know, the Rainbow Dash case, we already know what we look like. Why is Spike just sort of peeking in in the corner? <laughs> yeah. this, this, it's the same joke I saw in uh, Dragon Dragon Quest. And it's the sort of thing, oh, Spike's a member of the group, but not really. <laughs> and I'm just sort of like, you know, guys, it, in season one, it would have been funny. But this is season four. It's not funny anymore. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it is, could, it, it breaks I, the composition. <laughs> I just yeah. want, I want to say to Spike, Spike, go hang out more with Big Mac. Obviously, you're not getting the support you need from these six. <laughs> no. <laughs> go hang out with your guy, friends. But on the topic of that picture, uh, if that was a print, I would buy that in a second. Oh, I would I can, love to have that on my wall. I, for one, can predict that picture. There's going to be a trading card. I I love the fact that the rainbow that she's so forward about it. It's like we already know what we look like, and I'm like, yeah, that's why Twilight had a one of one that one portrait on on her library at the end of season three. <laughs> <laughs> like I like that the season three finale, but that portrait is a, is such a eyesore. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like of course Spike finally tells the main six that the rest that the castle looks awful, and they are like, oh, thank you, somebody said it. <laughs> we didn't, they didn't want to say anything not to hurt each other's feelings, and um, but of I course the that. place is an it's a complete and absolute mess, and it gets even worse after the party cannon goes. <laughs> oh God. Out of the mouths of babe, the dragons. <laughs> I feel like they're more party minds than party cannons. <laughs> hidden party cannons, because you don't know where they are. They're, they're just dotted around. They're party minds, not cannons. <laughs> <laughs> One wrong step and poof, you're uh... And even, even Pinky doesn't know where she might hide them. Oh, I just love the line when she says, like, uh, not mine, because I don't know where they are. <laughs> Uh, I can remove the party cannons. I don't remember where I hit them. <laughs> Which goes to show that she would be completely willing to do it if she knew where they were. So that's a good so, bonus. 
they, they do have to fix that mess up. So they ask uh, Spike to stall Twilight as much as they, uh, as much as he could. Yep, yep. So uh, here we go back to the spa. And okay, are we gonna have to talk, we're gonna have to talk about Twilight's new there main style? But <laughs> I got a line. I, I got a line. I okay. really like her main. Yeah. Damn it, you stole my line. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of people doing that. And it feels like that was one of the, like, I say it was the moment where I suddenly went, this is a great episode just because I don't know what it is about that style. And it really suits. Yeah. The whole spa scene was great. Um, it's truly, truly, truly outrageous. <laughs> yeah. And here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. If they wanted to keep it for future reference or just for the future, they can do it really because the S is already there and they can reuse it multiple times. I hope they do so badly. You know what? That's, that means style is going to be on another pony. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. But I mean, it, what with Snowflake or what's his name? The, uh, the muscle uh, pony? Bulk, bulk biceps. Bulk yeah, yeah. biceps, that's the one. You were going to I say, uh, you were going to say Silver about the, the main style? Oh, uh, just that this highlights the, fa- this unique, uh, approach to the fandom. Nowhere else would a change in, in hairstyle. <laughs> Evokes so much fan art in such a short amount of time. So true. <laughs> it, well, this this goes to prove that Twilight can look great with any hairstyle. But uh, but Spike doesn't let any of this distract him, and he's like, I have to figure out a way to keep Twilight uh, here as much as I can. Oh, I'm gonna ask for the super oh, the, the the extra strength hot stone deep tissue massage. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it, oh, it's, <laughs> I love how I love how bulk biceps break through the wall and then he grabs Spike but with his chest muscles like <laughs> that, I, is, I, that 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 made me flashback to to Ren and Stimpy. Oh god, yeah. I have to I I have to say this because when I first heard about the massage, like oh okay, I mean oh it's gonna be very painful and whatnot. That okay, uh, that's gonna be fun. And suddenly, yeah. Oh god! Oh, oh god! No. It's like do this little dragon. And then like oh god! And he when he goes back when he comes in he crashes into a wall. When he go back he crashes into another wall. And yeah. Who, who which, was this? Which, Lotus. Yeah, uh, Alan, which made Hello. made the scene for me the whole spa scene. She talks in that, and the voice is really calm. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I can't oh, that's what I was going to use. People, people oh. put together that her accent is South Korean, and <laughs> I am like, ooh, nice. I and <laughs> here's here's the thing. Oh, I hate I hate it when he does that. So this yeah. means he's not the first time. <laughs> exactly. I love how they bring they bring that forward. Like a lot of the times, you'd see that happen, and no one would bat an eyelid. This this pony just goes, yeah, no, please stop doing that. <laughs> I think that's great. I think that's great. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I don't think Alo gets enough uh, credit for that scene. She sold that line. <laughs> yeah. She sold oh, the entire concept. Yes. And, yes, and she I, is. And I'm just like, random spa pony, you have earned the internet. Yeah, and you know, when, when whenever I watch Family Guy, they always go to that cut, cutaway gag. And this year, it's almost like a cutaway gag, but it really works in this situation it, where... it progresses the story well. I, implying that the cutaway gags on Family Guy actually work. Um, <laughs> Give and the, take. The, the thing is that this is, yeah, this has the same nature, but that's because <laughs> the timing of the joke is very fast. And th- this is the kind of slapstick comedy that works fine. I mean, that people confuse slapstick comedy with just, you know, being painful for the sake of being painful. This is funny because it happens so quickly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, muscle, grab. Roll through the wall, and I'm, and you are like, it is so funny, it's so sudden and so fast that it's it's very hilarious. I, that quick time, it's like is ripping something... a bandaid off. <laughs> yes, uh, I would have thought that he would go through the hole again, but no, he went to he made another hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so oh, well that uh, that is comedy gold. It, yeah. it is absolute comedy gold. It, it, it's g- going to prove that anything with bulk biceps in it is going to, it's going to still be as funny as he first, uh, when he f- first appeared in Hurricane Fluttershy. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that they took that one character and turned him into a fully fle- fleshed out, uh, 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 character now. Is that, like, yeah, secondary character and all that, but he works at the spa. So aside mm-hmm. from weightlifting, being in the Equestria Games and in the Wonderworlds Academy, now we know that he also works at the spa 
in his spare time. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. Actually, I both like the... being a volunteer pony. He just volunteers mm. everywhere. Mm, true, true. Bulk actually has some mad uh, time management skills. Oh, really? How? Oh, yeah. Look at what, well, look what we just described. The dude is everywhere. Yeah. Mm, true, 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 true. That, although he might have commitment issues as well. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm still hoping over here where the, uh, uh, for the episode where they reveal that he's the father of Featherweight. <laughs> I, I don't know. I like... the one with the camera, isn't it? Yeah, Featherweight is the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the, the photographer pony, the Peter Parker pony, <laughs> like I like to call him. Uh, I don't know. I saw a picture a while ago where he's encouraging his son, quote unquote son, to make the best pictures in the quest. And Feather, Featherweight is going, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like, uh, but yeah. So they, um, we go back to the castle where they're trying to figure out how many things they are going to have to remove in order to unclutter the mess that they made, and. Uh, of course, Righty doesn't want to take anything down. And when Rainbow Dash takes w- down the portrait, Righty takes down the posters, and then Rainbow Dash, ta- Rainbow Dash and Righty take out uh, the the quills, the qu- and so on. So they start taking things out. I have to say, now that I say it not, that, like that, a bit of a rush conflict between the main five, trying to like you know outdo what the others have done. I feel like it's a, a small tiff, like they have in. Uh the premiere where they have a small tip, but they make up very quickly. Like, it's not a big fight. It's just a little one. It's a scuffle uh, at best because they want to clean up the room, but nobody's willing to take away anything. And Rainbow Dash makes the first move. And with that, Rarity, and then Applejack, and then everybody. And then by that point, there's an alliance made. <laughs> Here's something I just ponder, because I like to ponder. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you noticed that Pinky and... And Fluttershy seems to be coming at odds more and more. Well, it could be Philly Vanilli. Mm. Well, this was even before Philly Vanilli. There was the that awful moment in uh, putting your huff down. Oh God! Where she, where Fluttershy decimated uh, Pinky's self confidence. Mm-hmm. Then there was Equestria Girls, where they're arguing about the animal charity. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, there was uh, Philly Vanilli, where I guess. I don't want to say Pinky doesn't strike me as the revenge type. <laughs> well, but no, she was I... more oblivious in that episode than ever. But I guess I guess it comes from the fact that Vladrasha is is uh, slowly episode by episode growing a spine, and mm-hmm. even though her conflict for the past four seasons has always been the exact same one. Oh, I'm shy and I don't know how to cope with it. Yeah, yeah, I'm more confident with myself. Okay, <laughs> reboot button. Let's do the same thing for the next episode that I'm, that I'm the protagonist of. It's, uh, it is something that the writers like to do, but that I think that comes from the, from the fact that Fluttershy is a difficult character to write for. Mm-hmm. So I, I know, I know what you mean, uh, Silver, when you say that is that finally Fluttershy is like not uh, giving in to, to Pinkie Pie's demands. And backing her behavior with very good reasons is like, oh, I, I would tell them to stop picking at the balloons if you'd stop, uh, if you stop the, the confetti cannons. Although, I uh, I just feel bad for Andrea. Goes back to it. Sorry. Oh, hang on. Oh, I, just saying, I feel uh, bad for Andrea Liebren. She's got like <laughs> voice artist schizophrenia. <laughs> Arguing with well, herself. You say, you say Andrea Liefman. What about Ashley Paul? Do you remember for other friends? Oh, that God. was her arguing with herself all the time. <laughs> Thinking. I was just saying. I feel like the the conflict goes back further than that. I mean, back when she said you listen to good old Pinky, Auntie Pinky, and she said I'm a year older than you. I feel like it goes back. It goes back a bit further than that, doesn't it? Yeah, probably. But I, the way I think about this episode specifically, it's the clash of personalities and. Uh, the situation that's happening to them now at a specific time because you have Pinkie Pie complaining to Fluttershy to st- ask their birds to stop poking at the balloons and Fluttershy is saying with a passive-aggressive tone that, well, if they don't scare them, they wouldn't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the the argument goes, uh, escalates further and further. And uh, as we leave them arguing inside the castle, we see the, the the side effects of that deep tissue uh, deep tissue massage that Spike put himself through in order to distract a twilight. <laughs> so um, they take the scenery route through Ponyville, and they end in the probably most heartbreaking shot of the entire episode. 
Oh. When they encounter the remains of the Golden Oaks Library, which, first of all, made me kind of scratch my head going, it's still there. They didn't remove it until then. They just left it there as a, what? It's like, ah, Twilight, we left the library there to make you feel bad. <laughs> yeah, but now it, here's, here's a pop quiz question. How long has it passed since the attack, uh, T-Rex attack and this episode? Like, Six months probably? No, maybe months, shorter. Yeah, it's so, been ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> In real time of the episode, it's been like forty-four minutes or something like. That. It's the day after. Oh god! You all expect this high drama over a course of months, but it's been ten minutes. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Bonnie's <laughs> don't know the meaning of the meaning. Too soon. Yeah. But okay, I I want to bring this up. I want to bring this up. This is the first time that any of the characters mentioned the Golden Oak Library. Like before this, I haven't heard that name before. You mean by name? Yeah, by name. Because in fan fictions, in whatever, it's been mentioned there. But this one, any of the characters, this is the first time. Any of you guys? Like I know James. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, the, yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> I am not Sweetie Belle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The yeah, it is true. In this show, they never mentioned the name of the Golden Oak Library, but in the scripts and in the in the merchandise, they do call it like that. I don't know if you remember, but Hasbro released during 2012 and 2013 a series of pop-up books mm-hmm. that um well they weren't even pop-up books. They were like uh, uh, uh you know activity books cut, cut cut together and then you glue it together and you make oh. a you make a um you make your own. Uh, little paper houses for your blind bags. Uh-huh. And they will have one of Sugar Cube Corner, one of Carousel Boutique, and one of the Golden Oak Library. Now, we never see the, we never hear the name of the library in the show. And it had to explode in order for them to drop the name. Like, we know Sugar Cube Corner and, and Carousel Boutique and all that, but, mm-hmm. and, and Sweet Alpha Lakers. But now, now Golden Oak Library, you have to be mentioned right after you. <laughs> yeah, that's guy. the last. That's the last time. That's but, the last no, time. I mean, what I'm talking is that this, the, the, the that shot of Spike and Twilight looking at the charred, twisted uh. remains of the of the library. That is hard to watch. Yeah, that that is just something that no. hurts. Yeah, I mean, you look at that and you're like, that used to be home for four seasons and now it's gone. But I think here's the setup, really, because, um, like, I, like, like I said before, foreshadowing, because here's the setup of what the lesson is going to be for this episode. But let's not spoil it until we reach the. Oh, well, the, well, the the lesson is always get insurance. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that castle could, that uh, library could have been covered. Uh, isn't that under the government? Shouldn't Mayor Mayor who have dealt with that like? Have we? Can we trust Mayor Mayor with any form of bureaucracy? Truly, uh, okay. After, the the, after, Friends after Forever, Fri- no. yeah. After Friends Forever number fifteen, uh, kind of depends. <laughs> yeah, just like every other government, when emergency <laughs> hits, I guess yeah. But everyone else, new. That though, I I still wonder what are they going to do with the books inside? Or if there is any remains oh, of wow. the books inside? But yeah, I mean, it is it is good that they set this up so well and that they go back to the library one more time. Um, so as Spike is trying to, uh, uh, as Twilight is trying to fly away to go back to the castle, Spike stops her <laughs> and he's like, "No, no, no! I would like to have a, I would like to have a bed." <laughs> and Twilight is like, but I thought you said you sleep like a baby. And here, best quote of the entire episode, every pony knows babies are terrible sleepers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. Oh, you know, yes, James. they I, are. I don't even blame you. Right now, my household has two. <laughs> it, but it is true now, man. isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it uh, my, um, uh, my, uh, my army brony friend, he uh, we, he was watching the episode and he was giving me his uh, live reaction to it, and he was like, "Thank you, spy. Somebody said it. I hate that <laughs> sentence about sleeping like a baby. Oh, that means you slept terrible, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> because it is true. <laughs> and, I, uh, and it's that, uh, so. Yeah, that was a that was a very cleverly put together um, uh, sentence. Yeah. So. From there, they go to, uh, we go back to the castle with the rest of the main five and uh, the rest of the main six and 
We see that they have uncluttered the place so much, they put it back into the, ori- <laughs> the original condition. So, not very forward here, guys. You're, you're, you're wasting time. You have to figure out a way before you give Twilight the same castle that she left. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I- I'm taking a look-see again. Did they change room or did they have breakfast at that table? They couldn't have breakfast at the table. That's where the map of her, of uh, that's the, where the map of uh, the cutie marks is. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm looking they, at. They changed rooms. They uh, oh, because they were yeah. at a they were in a dining room earlier. Oh, uh, okay. Although I did well, find they decorate the whole castle, aren't they? Well, yeah. at, at least well, they started with one room and didn't get much further. But what mm. I find funny is that this kind of confirms the map is still active. I thought, oh, does it go away once? Does it not activate unless? All six are seated at the round table. Mm, okay. And the answer is no, it's still there. Uh, what was the other? Oh, there was a criticism of this episode that I read online that I think is worth discussing. Ooh. Uh, the idea is that the main Twilight's friends, they're all, all they have to do is go up to Twilight and say, hey, can you hang out a little longer? We bit off more than we can chew. <laughs> Uh, that is the easy solution to this conundrum, which, as we all know, our, these ponies never take the easy solution. Mm-hmm. But I'd actually argue against that criticism that basically we're saying the goal, the goal here is not really to remodel this place. It's to show Twilight how good friends we are, that we know you. I mean, you get a friend a gift, you want them to know that you can tailor that gift to their tastes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And and the problem is, if you go to someone and say, oh, uh, this is going to take a little longer, you're in a way admitting, yeah, we're having trouble figuring you out as a friend. <laughs> so true. So I, I don't think that it's a plot hole that they didn't, uh, that they didn't just go up to Twilight and say, hang out a little longer. Yeah, because think about it, like, that's her home. Why would they ask her to do that? That's, that's what yeah. Spike's there for. Yeah, it's, uh, on a, on a smaller scale, it's like if you go to someone and, and you are like, hey, for no, for, for no, re- just silly question. If you were to have a, a sweater, what would be your favorite color, red or blue? <laughs> so. S- subtlety. Yeah, like, that, that, it, it, it is true that, yeah, okay, that is the point where honesty might not be the best course of action. You mm-hmm. do have to have, uh, you do have to, you need to have a bit of a discretion. You need to be a bit, uh, you need to have tact, which is what the main six had with, uh, b- g- g- getting Spike to go and stall Twilight while they're trying to figure out what to get to her. And this is, this is the part of the episode that shines, in my opinion, when they're trying to figure out what Twilight likes so much of living in the Golden Ox library. And, they start talking about past episodes, like how mm-hmm. Rainbow Dash messed it up with the Sonic Rainbow or the, the, the sleepover episode mm-hmm. with Applejack and Rarity. Or that one time that it threw <laughs> out into smithereens? No, oh, wow. That was the worst. Uh, you know, but, okay, with them talking like that, the first thought that went into my mind was books. Yes, Twilight loves books. We need more books in the house of hers. Yes, Books. She already has a whole library in there, though. Yeah, yeah she does. Oh, actually, that caused a bit of a stir. Oh, uh, you're talking about Big Jim Miller's uh, tweet about the the library in the Crystal Girls? Yes, and people apparently don't want to acknowledge that library because that would mean acknowledging the Crystal Girls. And it's just like, guys, it happened. Yeah. There's no shame in it happening. If you yeah. didn't like it, here's season four. It's still a good season. Uh, here's season five after Rainbow Rocks, which I actually thought was a decent movie. Wait, were you, what are you talking about again? Because I'm a bit confused. Like the library, oh. are you talking about the books that Twilight oh, we're from? Talking, we're talking people, about that one scene where, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Silver. Oh, sorry. People were tweeting, uh, Big Jim over at DHX, mm-hmm. uh, asking, you know, why didn't they include more books or why, why did we not get to see a library for Twilight? And he's pointed out, oh, there was, there is a library. It's in Rainbow Rocks. So you've already seen that. Uh, and people were like, no, no, because Rainbow Rocks didn't happen. It did. Yeah. Like, you see, girls didn't happen. 
Uh, here is the here is the mentality of the fandom in that the, the part of the fandom that was complaining about that scene. This is what they their chain of thought is. Let me let me see if you can uh, let me know if you follow me on this. Acknowledging the library means acknowledging Rainbow Rocks, which means acknowledging the relationship between Twilight and Flash Sentry. <laughs> so by association, acknowledging the library is acknowledging Flash Sentry. And of course, the fandom doesn't want their waifu to have a, a husband though. No, that would be terrible. Women never go into relationships. Oh my god, no, Twilight is supposed to hang out with my OC. Nope, nope, nope. So, yes, yeah. nope. Sorry, I kind of went in a bit of a rant, but it kind of made my blood boil. Because Big Jim Miller got very upset. These it's... guys have been working super hard for nine months plus on bringing each episode of this show. And then you come forth and you say that the worst part of this episode is a tiny little detail. I don't agree with that. Like, I totally don't agree with that mindset. Like, oh, I don't either. They, they, uh, the libraries in the uh, Equestria Girls thing. You know what? I would have loved to see the library and the mirrors behind them. Oh, the uh, the portal. Yeah, the device. Yeah, yeah. That would have been like, okay, here, Ronis, here's what oh. you want. Uh, the library. Now look at that mirror there. Look at that mirror there. Yeah. Me. You know I what? I think it. it's it. It is getting to the point that the show, the the guys behind the show, they are going to end up putting the mirror just to spite that part of the fandom <laughs> and canonize it. To be perfectly honest, I would have minded to to, to canonize Equestria Girls with the with the TV show uh, universe, mm-hmm. but that, that will be like a 2013 mentality. But right now, I don't mind at all. I think it's perfectly fine. You know, to me, it's more about continuity than anything else because, like. I, I hate it when something happens in one part of the show, like in this case, Equestria Girls, if the, the, if the library does pop up and the mirror's not there, I'll be questioning, where's the mirror? Why is the mirror not there? And then you'll have people like me talking to Big Jim, asking, where's the mirror? Blah, blah, blah. And he'll respond with, oh, I thought you guys didn't like the mirror. And then like, ah, we, this is a vicious cycle of making people happy. No. Yeah, and then you become Sega, especially Sonic things. <laughs> uh, and to make everybody happy, you end up not doing anybody happy, yeah. especially yourself. Yeah. Remember that lesson from Suited for Success? That was yep, a very yep. good lesson. Applied to everybody. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we are going a bit off topic, but mm-hmm. yeah, they um they trying to figure out why Twilight... Uh, enjoys being at the library so much and uh, I think this is the one part that you were missing Silver about uh, uh, Pinkie Pie being <laughs> overly over the top but then having a bit of a tone down like when she goes remember when it blew up <laughs> oh, wait no that was the worst <laughs> like had she not acknowledged that that was a bit of a mess up on her side it could have been Pinkie Pie bad of uh, Philip and Lily. yeah but I like that part, especially with the, with the with the face that she puts on. She goes bonkers. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute, no, that was the worst. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's safe. Nice safe though. Nice safe. But yeah, they end up figuring out that yes, what she wants is the what Twilight will want is to have um, it's <clears throat> to have a, a a memento of the Golden Oaks Library. So Applejack comes up with an idea, and they uh they they split up. Uh, Rainbow Dash, tw- uh, Rarity and Pinkie Pie go shopping, and Applejack and Fluttershy stay behind to do something with the the remains of the Golden Oak Library. Mm-hmm. As they, of course, beg Spike to keep stalling Twilight. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> and there goes again Spike being funny, being helpful, but but also having a lot of comedy to him. Oh, do you hear that? <laughs> it's too squeaky. Let's find uh, another bed. I, I thought in this scene that the pony here, like, I, I don't know what's his name, but the Devonport. sales pony, De- Devonport, yeah. I Devonport. thought Devonport you, here you, was going to <laughs> say, oh, shop's closed, and Spike would have to do something else. Although, I, I do have to call baloney on one thing. Oh, what? That is the quills and sofa pony. Yeah. <laughs> He is selling beds. This is the first time we've had false advertising that actually had more <laughs> than offer. Uh, quills, sofa, well, and beds. Yeah, no, they're gonna have to call it quills, uh, quills and sofas and beyond. <laughs> uh, this is treachery. The Better Business Bureau would take this case and laugh at me because it sounds so dumb. So, yeah, we have the main six uh, taking, uh, doing something with the the remains of the library. And when Twilight and Spike finally go back to the to the castle, they 
they see that nothing's going on, that there has been no change, and Spike is legitimately upset. He's like, oh, come on, you didn't do anything. I didn't stall her for nothing. And that's when Twilight is like, wait a minute, you were, you didn't want me to come back? And they were like, it took us a little bit to figure out what you'd like. And uh, then we go to the part of the episode that either, either breaks it or makes it for a, yeah. for a lot of people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the reason why it breaks some of the fans is so silly. Yeah, but here's, here's what I noticed because this is a 50-50 split. And from the people I talked to, they said that it could have done better, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, I, I don't really 100% remember what they all said, but... The one what... complaint that I... That, well... Well, let's let's talk about what they revealed yeah. to have done to the castle. Is that yeah, yeah. as Twilight steps into the main hall, uh, where the cutie map is, they reveal that they have made a chandelier out of the roots of the Golden Oak Library, mm -hmm. and that they have put some some sort of memory gems hanging from the chandelier, containing the memories from all the other adventures that they have had together and all the good times that they have spent. Uh, either in the Golden Ox library or uh, together. And it's it's powerful and emotional enough to drive Twilight into tears. And this is the complaint that I hear from the people that don't like this. Oh my God, she's hanging a corpse from the ceiling. It's the dead corpse of the Golden Oak library. That is so morbid and, 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 and horrible. And oh. I am over here shaking my head going... What? Okay, so before we carry on with this, like, I want to know from all four of us, like, okay, James, we already know your point of view on the Golden Oaks roots down well, you there. Don't, you don't know, you don't know it. I already, I already mentioned it, but yeah, yeah. Go, so go, go, I want I, to know I from the rest. Last. I, yeah, yeah. We'll go last. So, Silver, what do you think? I can I kill like five trees before breakfast. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I I don't agree when people are are screaming foul over um the corpse of a tree. You do know that trees don't have corpses in that sense. Mhm. Mm uh and also people I've known people to decorate their homes with like petrified wood or well, even a wooden table. I am sitting at a wood table right now. Mhm. <laughs> Same here. Am, am I morbid for having what is this tree is no more. It's just gone on to join the choir invisible. <laughs> it is an X foliage. Yes. <laughs> Extra points for making a Monty Python reference when reviewing an episode. Yay. So, to say, oh, that's morbid, I actually think it is a very heartfelt and clever gift, and I want those memory crystals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As for me, when I take a look at see, when I look at that, I, I thought about, oh, wow, that's creative, using the remains of the Golden Oak Library as a chandelier, and I see what Rarity did. That was really awesome. And the way they did it, and the way that they hold it up there, I thought it was really awesome and cool. I mean, I, I didn't see any foul and I didn't see any negative points. And me talking to someone, they said that uh, they, they had a lot of negative comments to say about that part. And I don't really remember most of them. Uh. I think it's a really sweet gesture. And I'm more fascinated with how they got the memories in the crystals, which was interesting. <laughs> and I, with given my occupation, I've pulled up trees before from the roots. That is a hefty, full, maybe two-day job. They did that in less than an afternoon. That is quite interesting how they did that. But it is a um, very nice gesture. I mean, books would have been the next best thing, but I'm guessing they've all been set alight. So I still love this. And on the topic of, oh, what was it? It's a dead tree. Oh, mm -hmm. no, it's a corpse. So, AJ, how's that wooden barn doing for you? <laughs> a wooden house? Yeah, it's good. Your cottage for the That's partly wood, isn't it? Anyway, uh, I just think it's a stupid thing to say. I mean, it's a tree that had a house in it. The only reason you associate sentimental value to it is because it belonged to Twilight and Spike, which, yes, it has sentimental value to it even now, but not to the point where you need to mourn it, like all those rest-in-peace pictures that popped up and <laughs> blew up. Yeah. That was just silly. Um, yes, it's gone, but it's not, you know, it's not... It's not a corpse. It's, yeah. it, it it's, it's gone, but it's not gone. It's it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's literally hanging above your equestrian map table, yep, which yep. I think is interesting that they kept that 
active. It's like the box, you know, the crystal box with the keys in mm. season four. And they had the poster of that on the wall. Mm. I think it's interesting they have the continuity there. It's surprising how uh, many things in this show struck a chord with me personally, and this uh, thing kind of does with me as well. Um, my my grandfather, my father's father, he he used to work at a factory, and he had a, a set of tools, like uh, high power tools, like he had a, a sledgehammer, a pickaxe, and all that. And when uh, uh, when my grandfather s- stopped working there, my father took the the pickaxe, and he took the wooden shaft of the pickaxe, and he he took it and uh, chipped pieces of wood out of it until he um he turned it into a baseball bat. Oh wow! And I still have that baseball bat. It's in my room, and it is one of the few uh, memories or remains that I have of my of my grandfather. So to me, having that is it's kind of like having there as well. Mm. So to me, the the chandelier roots of the Golden Oak Library to me it's it's okay in my book. It's a okay in my book. It is it is such a such a beautiful heartfelt uh, uh, memento that it, it Apple Jack says it's like it's made of, out of the gold, Golden Oak uh, Library roots, so you don't know you you don't remember you don't forget where you come from. Mm-hmm. That is so good and yeah. that that is so sweet. Also, there are ninety three gems in that tree, <laughs> as many three as many gems as there are episodes of this show. Yeah, I did have that much free time that I can't go with. <laughs> I did the same, and I can't 94. Oh, well, I'm probably off by one. Uh, but, you know, here, here's the moment of truth. Every pony holding their breath, waiting for Twilight's response. And when she turned around with tears in her eyes, tears of joy, by the way. <laughs> Everyone was happy and excited. And, oh, that that moment, like, oh. And this is the moment where we said that Ro will never watch this episode. Ro, uh, Ro- Rolicious, Romo, one of the guys yeah. in the in the in the show who mm-hmm. he would be the side of the audience who doesn't like the the tree uh, being in the ceiling because ah corpse, <laughs> but yeah also yeah I don't subscribe to the whole corpse thing. Uh, my computer is sitting on the corpse of a of a tree and the railing of my house is made out of corpses of trees. That is a very tree hugger uh, perspective when you think about it, like, guys. It's an X. Foliage, like <laughs> Silver put it so cleverly. Come on, but yeah, it is. Um, it's a very sweet moment, and it only gets better at the end when they go to the dining room where they were having uh, pancakes, and it's been decorated by Rarity, who gave it its personal touch. Mm-hmm. And then Applejack also decorated the the kitchen. Uh, Fluttershy put some plushies on Twilight's bedroom, and Rainbow has put some there into posters in the library. And I'm like, that is also very cool. Mm-hmm. They didn't put all of their things together in the same room, but they gave their own personal touch to different rooms of the castle. Yeah. It could have been great if we saw those rooms as well, but I like that. It's like yes, keeps the th- keeps the decoration self contained to the to each each one of the rooms. That is good. That is using your like, brains, guys. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they decorated the rooms that mix with their personalities the most as well. Rarity of the dining room, for to shine the bedroom, apple trap the kitchen, so on and so forth, and. Uh, on a comment that on a previous podcast, Silver Quill, you mentioned you'd like to see a study for Twilight. I think that might be a thing, you know. If you look I at the, uh, I would enjoy that. that mm-hmm. I, like you said, I think that would be great, mm-hmm. and I think it was a great way to give every, give all the main six, not what they wanted, uh, their input to the castle without. Like the episode was a problem with mixing and mashing it. Yeah. And here's the thing when. I heard a few other podcasts and I heard a few other theories or what I want this to be or how it should have ended. And one of the things is having each of the main six selecting a room and personalizing it themselves. And one more thing is uh, the main six stay with Twilight in the castle because it's big and sure they have multiple rooms for their friends to stay at. So that's what I heard from people who saw this episode and how it should have ended kind of situation. I've seen how it should have ended. Believe me, it would have been much more unpleasant for them. Mm. (laughs) Uh, But actually, that raises one other point. Shouldn't there be, like, a staff on hand to help clean and manage? I don't think Spike can can handle all this alone. And But then I think... I. I might as well give away one joke from my upcoming review. I'll bring up 
should mm-hmm. have a staff. I turn around, and who should be standing there but Flash Sentry, grinning, <laughs> like, he's in, <laughs> like he's in equal town. It's like, wow, dude, that, that's why they call you Flash. Ah, he's in the center of the universe. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But, uh, but still, but still, I mean, I do agree with you, um, Silver, that Twilight should have at least staff for the library. You know what? Not, not even that. I, I want something like this to happen. She doesn't need a staff. She has a spike. No, 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 not that. I mean, here's what I want to happen. <laughs> Crack the whip. <laughs> Faster slave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. But here's what I want to happen. Um, The situation is going to be like this. Spike complains to Twilight that he's tired of cleaning the castle because I'm alone. I need help. And Twilight thinks about it and um, he she says doesn't need to. And Spike's complain to Celestia and Celestia hires a few help for her castle. And there, you got staff. And then the ship fix begin as the Twilight is now living in a castle with other ponies. Oh my. Welcome to the real world, Equestria. <laughs> Oh, no. It's like Big Brother, but on a pony scale. <laughs> exactly. It's big sister. Today in Twilight's castle, Flash Sentry is stuck into Twilight Sparkle's room. We have no cameras in there. Oh, God, no. So, with with that, uh, with that the episode ends. And mm-hmm. So, guys, uh, final thoughts. What... Uh, now that we, we have spent long and long and... Wow, this is probably one of the longest uh, reviews we have had. For just as I think we talk about this episode more than we talk about the the season the season premiere. Uh, getting uh, close, getting close. Because it, yeah. So, what would you guys think? Uh, what would you guys say about this episode? Uh, as you know, final thoughts. Mm. What would you say about it? And like always, uh, inverted alphabetical order. Vouch for that. So, Silver, what would you say about it? It doesn't undo my issues with the castle's design overall, but it builds on them to make it more personable, more part of the world, and more than just a sales pitch. It actually does a better job than the season premiere, giving equal time to each character, and highlights why I think that uh, the comedy slice of life is this show's greatest strength. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No disrespect to the adventure fans, but to me, this has always been a slice of life show, and so I thoroughly enjoyed it. As for me, I when, when I take a look see at this episode, like, when I watch it, it was, oh, this is a very fun episode. This is one of those slice of life that I could sit back and enjoy. And there, there were funny bits, like, mm-hmm. in the early part, we have Bok Biceps coming in, crashing into the wall and crashing out of the wall and grabbing Spike with his pecs, like, oh, that's going to be funny, ha, 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 and Twilight with her new main style and whatnot. And when it comes to game time, the emotions, that the raw emotions, the, like, awe moments, like, those things, it plays, it plays well, like, the tree and all that stuff, like, it, it really tugs on those heartstrings. It matters where it, uh, where it needs to be. But one thing, if a complaint, if I need to say, is... I would love to see each pony's hand or hoof in decorating each part of the castle. Like, we see what Rarity did with the dining room. I do want to see the kitchen. I do want to see the library. And I do want to see <coughs> Twilight Sparkle's bedroom. Yeah. And with Pinky, I, don't, <laughs> I got no idea what Pinky did. She left explosives. I don't think she could find them. She, she, she created a minefield around the castle in case <laughs> some uh, fun collector around uh, uh, arrives uh, taking care of it. Yeah. He's calling cheese sandwich in his party detector. Oh, God. As I said at the beginning, I feel like this episode episode's plot was predictable, but the little bits in between the character development and the way the episode played out reminded me of another episode that I saw as predictable way back in season one. Mm-hmm. Which is art of uh, which uh, is art of the dress and suited for success. Suited for success. Sorry, but the reason it reminded me so much is because the songs were similar in the sense that they had two parts. The lyrics changed. Oh. It went from happy to a different sort of mood, and the, the episode played out similar as well, where the 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 main well, not the main six, but the main five realized something about one of the the other main six, and that was that they have flaws and that they need to mm. work it out, whether that be behind their back or not. And I think it played out similar, and I enjoyed it more in the end. 
Which so, one? Um, suited for success or this one? Both. They, they oh. both sort of, both of them I started out disliking and they really grew on me. Mm-hmm. So I do believe it is very similar <laughs> in not just the song, but in the episode as well. Remember when I said that this was an episode that you can sit down, watch, and turn off your brain, mm-hmm. just uh, enjoy it because it's very simple. It is very simple, but there is a, there is a, sub, uh, there is some. Uh, how do I put it without making me sound pretentious as hell? <laughs> because this is going to sound okay. This is going to sound pretentious whether I like it or not. So I'm just going to say it. I like that there is a theme going on throughout the entire episode. If you think about it. All of the main six, and uh, Twilight in particular, they spend the entire episode, or at least a good chunk of it, uh, reflecting, looking back uh, at what they have been doing in the past. Uh, we, when they start talking about what Twilight likes so much about the library, and they talk about all these past episodes, how we go back to the Golden Ox library, and they, uh, they, they see how destroyed it is, and how they repurpose it as a as kind of like a makeshift giant collage of memories that have happened in all previous episodes from all previous seasons. There is a, there is a theme going on about reflect, the reflection, reflecting on the past, looking back to it. And it's, I don't know if they did it intentional, but there is a lot of that, of that, of that going on because Twilight reflects herself on mirrors throughout the entire episode and the main six, they reflect themselves on the surface of the of the castle. So I like that theme, the theme of looking back, but being able to keep moving forward. And like this is a this is a new first uh, start that sets the the characters on a on a completely new route. I mean, the the premiere was uh, establishing pretty clearly that the map is probably going to play a bigger part. Uh, it, it either with them as a group, individual or in pairs. But this episode kind of like settles it and says, okay, guys, the past is in the past. Let's not forget it, but let's keep looking for the future. I like that. So, yeah, I mean, I like this episode. Very uh, very simple, very enjoyable. But it is, a, it, it is a joy that if I start scratching on the surface, I can keep getting things out of it. Mm. So, yeah, this episode, it's definitely one of the best, uh, one of the best slice of life episodes I have scene out there it's giving me a lot for very little and it is just beautiful to look at like it i i don't get the people that say that the animation in this show has gotten stiff and unnatural from season one it is that that's baloney it just keeps getting better with each season so hmm. yeah very enjoyable really liked it i loved it i did, i'll watch it again and pancake oh. <laughs> Pancakes. By the way, James, um, the writers are new to the show, right? Yes, these are new writers. Hmm, I'm Both... trying to look at what they did for the previous jobs, and uh, from what I can see, they did a really pretty awesome show called The Fairly Odd Parents. Like uh, that was from who is it? Uh, Christine Songko. Yeah, Christine and... Songko and Joanna Lewis. Yeah, Joanna Lewis also did an episode in The Fairly Odd Parents. So yeah, um, they're they're awesome writers because <laughs> if I remember right, Fairly Odd Parents they really it's a really good show. They should yeah. know how to write for Tara Strong. They that that mm-hmm. is that is <laughs> that is true. Who, by the way, she didn't get credited. If you look Who? on the Tara? yeah yeah, if you look at the credits at the end of the episode, they there is no credit for Tara Strong. I mean, what? Yeah, no, seriously, I just checked it out. I was like, what the hell? They didn't have her name on the credits? <laughs> look it up, oh. look it up. It is weird. I was like, wow, that is odd. Okay. If you're going I'm to forget now. someone to put in the credits, you shouldn't be forgetting the protagonist of the series. <laughs> Ooh, wow, okay. Um, That's something to look at and ponder. Uh, but yeah, so have you gave our final thoughts yet, James? Or yeah, have no, I no, just I, forgotten? No, I, I already said that. It is... It is it is super good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree too. I enjoyed the episode. So talking about episodes, what's next week's episode going to be, James? Oh, well, well, James is right. There's no, there's no Tara Strong. Oh well, yeah! <laughs> wow, we are not going to be reviewing an episode. We're going to be reviewing a comic. Oh. Yeah, next uh, comic we're going to be reviewing is uh, comic number eleven of the Friends Forever series. If I recall correctly, it's the one 
written by uh, is the one with Speedfire and Rainbow Dash. So yes, next ep- next episode is not going to be an episode at all, Norman. We're going to be oh. reviewing a comic. Yeah, we're going back to the comic books. We're not forgetting those guys. We're going to be reviewing comic number eleven of the Friends Forever series, written by Ted Anderson with art by Jay Foskett, with colors by the awesome Heather Breckel, as usual. So we're gonna see you guys on that one. Until then, this has been the NBA Show Reviews, and I have been James Cork. I am Norman Sanzu with pancakes. Yum yum. I will have my castle. And have cake asking. <laughs> and we wish you guys a good day, have fun, be well, and see you all later. Bye bye. Bye bye. I love you. Adios. <laughs> Pancakes!